Welcome back to the final video in my Git mini series, and this one's going to be for team development using Git. In the video before this, we looked at using Git as a solo developer, so if you haven't watched that video yet, now's a good time to do so. And the reason you're going to want to watch that first is because even if you're only working in team development, there's a lot of things that you would do as a solo developer using Git that is going to still apply just as much in team development. So let's get started. So it's probably worth mentioning that in the context of this video and probably everywhere, we're going to refer to team as being two or more people. And as I said before, all solo dev stuff, it's still going to apply. The only real difference between solo and dev stuff is the way you approach the usage of Git. You have to keep in mind that with team development, you, there's going to be other team members. And that brings us to our first major point of role assignment. Now, although role assignments is not specific to Git and it's certainly not a Git principle, it's worth talking about because how people use Git is going to be based on what their job is and what their role in the organization or project is. And some examples of role assignments that might be present in an organization or a project might be things like junior developer, senior developer, QA, maybe lead QA, and then like DevOps. And of course, the bigger the project is, the more roles are going to be. And then the smaller the project is, you know, maybe it's just two people and it's just everybody is doing all the same thing. And what role you are in the project is ultimately going to dictate how you're going to interact with the project and therefore dictate how you're going to use Git. So as a junior developer, perhaps you're just going to work through tasks, so you might just be making feature branches. As a senior developer, you might be reviewing code and doing merges. As a DevOps person, you might be setting up continuous integration or doing deployments or things like that. And as we work through these other points, a lot of that will become a little more clear. So our next point here is primary branches organization. And by far, the most important Git feature that's used with Teams is going to be the ability to make branches in Git. If you recall from the solo video, branching was a way to create these individual workspaces that could either be discarded at the end or merged into a master branch. For most team projects, there's going to be two what I call primary branches. And this is generally going to be a master branch and then a development branch. And the development branch might also be called dev or develop or sometimes QA or staging. So at a high level for a team project, what they're trying to do is take features and deliver those features to users. So for the master branch, this can be thought of as the branch that has features that are ready for users. Generally speaking, code that makes it into the master branch is both fully tested and ready for deployment. What type of project it is will dictate how you go about releasing that code. If it's a kind of web project where you're doing releases periodically, then you would just you know, do a deployment of whatever's in the master branch live, and then that'll be ready to go. But if you're working on a project that is more release-based, then you would decide as a team, okay, we have enough stuff to call this a release, you would tag it, and you would release it as a new version. And this would occur on the master branch. Now the develop branch or the dev branch or the QA branch or the staging branch, it's kind of like the master branch, except it's code that's not quite ready for the users, but it has been tested and it's almost ready to go. And when I say tested, I mean tested by automated tests or by the developer. So generally what happens is if you have a develop branch and say you have a web project, you'll actually have a development site as well. And this will be at least as far along as the master branch. And this will let people look at what the newest stuff is coming and so they know how it works and then they can check it for problems. So this is all code and features that is known to be working correctly but might not be the right requirement. And this might be the first time that somebody sees it and can check it out and can go back and say, oh, I want something like this changed. A lot of the times if you're building a feature for somebody that doesn't work in your group, perhaps they work in billing or something like that, this is going to be the first time they're going to see this new feature and it might not be correct. The last important point about these primary branches is that they're often going to be protected. And this means that not everybody is going to be allowed to push their code to the master or develop branches. Almost always it's going to be a select group of people who's going to be allowed to merge feature branches to develop and then merge develop to master. And this is most likely going to be your senior developers. The next big thing in Git team development is feature branches. And these are going to be made when a new feature request comes in. So say you're working on a project that is a chat platform, for instance, and you get a new feature request that says, we want an edit button for the chat messages. So you as the developer who is assigned this task might make a new branch and, and you'll name it something related to the feature, maybe like chat message edit button, and then you'll do your work on that branch. This is called a feature branch. 
Generally speaking, each task you do is gonna be organized under its own feature branch. And that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you ever need to discard the work because maybe it's not needed in the project anymore, then you can just get rid of it. You know, it hasn't been merged in, so it can be safely deleted. The second reason is if you have to stop working on a particular feature to go work on another feature, you can simply commit your work, check out develop, and then open a new feature branch for the different thing you're gonna work on. And it's not uncommon for projects with a lot of stuff going on to have a lot of open feature branches. That's just kind of how it works. Another good benefit of feature branches is the ability to show another developer your work in progress. So if somebody wants to see the feature you're working on, you're able to commit your work. They can then pull down your branch to their computer and they can check it out and they can see the same thing you see. This would also allow that same person to do some work on your feature branch, commit it, and push it up, and then you could pull it back down to your feature branch. Next we're going to talk about is hotfixes. At this point, you might be wondering, why do we have all these branches? Why do we need a master and develop branch when they're basically the same thing? So to answer this, you have to first look at how code is organized. You have to understand that the master branch of a project is always going to be the oldest one, which is to say that there's always going to be newer code in develop, and there's always going to be newer code in feature branches. So like the master branch might have 100 commits and then the develop branch might have 107 commits and then a feature branch might have 108 commits. So develop branch might be ahead of master by seven and then a feature branch might be ahead of develop by one. So this is where hotfixes come in. What if you have an emergency problem on a project and you need to get a single commit into master as quickly as possible and get it deployed? The problem with this is you can't use the develop branch because if you commit code to the develop branch and then you merge it to master, you're not just going to get your emergency change, you're going to get everything that's in develop pushed as well. And this is not ideal because what if those features are not ready? So oftentimes a hotfix is going to be a feature branch that was created by branching from master, making the change, and then merging it directly back to master and skipping develop altogether. By doing it this way, you're able to get a single change live as quickly as possible without dragging a bunch of unrelated stuff up with it. Next thing I want to talk about is feature branch rebases. And this is pretty important because a lot of times you'll start working on a feature and that feature might linger on your computer for weeks or even months without any, any new updates. And then you might return to that feature and start working on it again after a period of time. The problem is that feature branch is going to look like what your develop branch looked like the day you started working on it. And there might be another month's worth of code that you do not have on your feature branch. And what rebasing a feature branch allows you to do is take all the new code from develop and integrate it into your feature. Now branch rebasing is done with the git rebase command and it's done in about three steps. So if you wanna update your feature branch with the newest stuff from develop, the first thing it will do is it will roll back your feature branch to the point where you checked out develop. So it'll basically strip all of your new work out of the feature branch. Step two is it's gonna apply all new changes from develop onto your feature branch, which will just be what's called a fast forward. And that's because there's not actually gonna be any new work on your feature branch at this point. It will have rolled it back from step one. And then finally, step three, it's going to reapply your work onto that feature branch again. Now this has the potential to cause conflicts because if develop had some work that conflicts with your work on the feature branch, then when Git tries to reapply that work onto the feature branch, it could potentially run into some problems. And if it does, it'll notify you in the terminal and you'll be able to resolve those conflicts and then continue with the rebase. Now there's a couple of times where you might do a rebase. You might just do it periodically just because you wanna work on the feature, but you might also do it as a requirement before merge. A lot of times project leaders will require project developers to rebase their feature branches before they are merged into develop. And the reason this is done is to avoid merge conflicts when feature branches get merged to develop. If the developer rebases their branch, then they're gonna resolve the merge conflicts if there are any at that time, rather than them being resolved when it gets merged to develop. And this is because whoever's working on the feature branch, they're already aware of what potential problems are gonna be when it gets integrated into develop, and then they can handle that at that time. And the last thing we're gonna talk about for feature branch rebases is going to be this concept called force pushing. And this was something that I had in my solo video, but I decided instead to mention it here because this is where it really matters. So the problem with rebasing is that you've altered the Git history of what's going on because you've applied changes that happened in the past before you applied your own changes. And the thing is, after you rebase, 
your feature branch is going to look different than the feature branch that's in the repo. And when you go to do a git push after rebasing, it's not going to allow you to do that because the git histories have diverged. So what you're going to have to do in this case is do a force push. And a force push says, take my current feature branch and all the commits in it and exactly how it looks and make that look like the one in the remote repo. Generally speaking, force pushing should never be done on the master branch and probably never be done on the develop branch except in very rare circumstances by somebody that knows exactly what and why they're doing it. However, force pushing to a feature branch is completely fine as long as one thing is true and that nobody else is working on that branch with you. If somebody is working on it with you, the problem with force pushing is that when they go to do a git pull, they're going to be pulling down a history that's different from their own and it's going to cause a merge on their end. And this merge isn't happening because there's technically anything to merge. It's happening because the remote branch is different from their local branch and git is going to try to merge those two together even though they're pretty much the same thing. And last but not least is code promotion, and this is getting code from one place to another. So this is promoting code from a feature branch to develop, this is promoting code from develop to master, and then this is promoting code from master to a release or to some deployment. How exactly code is promoted from feature branches to develop is based on the project that you're on. Some organizations like to use pull requests, and that's because they're using a tool that supports like you know code review or commenting directly on the platform. But other times you'll just say, this is done, here's my branch name, and then a senior developer can take that branch and then merge it into develop. You have to keep in mind that a pull request is not really a Git feature, it's a GitHub or GitLab feature. However, merging and branching is very much a Git core feature. So as far as promoting code from develop to master, this generally involves getting people to test what is currently in develop. So this is all the proposed new changes that will be made live soon and see if everything's good. And this is generally done through testing. This is done through automated unit tests and also through something called acceptance testing. Acceptance testing can also technically be automated, but more commonly it's just sending the development site to somebody and saying, go take a look at this and make sure it's good. And then from there, if everything in develop is good, then senior developers more than likely going to merge that to master and then tag it or release it and then deploy it. This happens over and over, the project goes on and on and users keep getting new things. Now bear in mind that these workflows are just the most common. It's the ones that I've seen at virtually every project or organization I've ever worked with or on, but it's not the end all be all. You know, people are free to do it as they please and whatever works for their project. I mean, in the end, as long as a project is running smoothly and features are getting to users in a reasonable and efficient manner, then everything else doesn't really matter. And that concludes the Git mini series. I really appreciate everybody watching. If you have any questions or comments about this video or any video that was in the series, please leave them below in the comments. Thanks all for watching and I hope to see you on future videos. Take care.